Hi everyone, it's Dr. Goyle here, and today I'm going to be talking about some pretty exciting treatment for for COVID-19 uh, called ivermectin. And uh, I'm Sanjeev Goyal. I'm the medical director of Peak Human Labs. And uh, I hope to be giving you updates kind of on a weekly basis about this medication. And uh, it's really the amazing uh, research that's being done on it. So let's get started. So basically, we know that early evidence has shown that ivermectin is, to be, is looking to be a promising treatment for COVID-19. But it's not a new medication. Ivermectin's been around for decades. It was first discovered in Japan in the 1970s, and it's being used for uh, treating uh, parasitic infections uh, for a number of decades already now. As I was saying, it's being, it's being used in animals primarily to treat these parasitic diseases, and they also found it was effective in treating um, parasites that cause uh, river blindness and elephantiasis, and it looks to be very safe in humans with little adverse effects, primarily some nausea, uh, stomach ache, diarrhea, uh, vomiting if one was taken higher enough dose, but generally very well tolerated by mouth. And here's an excellent review article that uh, I can, uh, can click on that basically talks about that. So what's interesting is that in the last I don't know, six months or so, we found out that it also is highly effective against COVID. And here's a, here's a, a study done in antiviral research that basically showed in vitro that ivermectin inhibited the replication of SARS. And you can see by about a 5,000-fold reduction in virus at 48 hours in cell culture. And um, so this seems very promising. So looking, the number of studies have been done since then and they were basically looking at three different endpoints viral replication clinical response uh, you know time to leave the hospital and uh, actual overall mortality let's look at the studies so a total of about i think 1500 patients have been uh, randomized in these trials of ivermectin uh, they have used a dose of about 0 0.2 milligrams per kilogram or 0.4 milligrams per kilogram and the duration has varied anywhere from one day to about seven days so uh, sample size you can see over here um, in this in this column and they also treated patients all the way from mild symptoms all the way to uh, you know, patients that were in the hospital the uh, uh, studies were mostly done in Bangladesh and Egypt uh, these were some of the biggest studies done so what we found in the studies, look at the two Egypt studies and the one in Bangladesh, is that there was definitely faster time to viral clearance. Uh, you can see here, pretty much halved, halved the uh, time to viral clearance. And then in this one, the third column, this was a, a, they gave a much lower dose of, uh, of medication in the study for, in Bangladesh. There was faster time to hospital discharge or clinical recovery, almost also 50%. Uh, the time was basically cut in half and looking at survival benefits it looks like there was significant survival benefit reduction in death rate of about 83 uh, percent with a uh, you know significant p-value and confidence in interval between 65 to 92 percent all-cause uh, mortality you can see here again that there's a 28.28 uh, risk ratio uh, and confidence interval is from 0.13 to 0.62. That's looking at all the uh, all the trials that are out there. So as I was saying, there's been 11 randomized trials with about 1,450 patients, uh, primarily in Bangladesh and Egypt. And what's coming? is another 56 trials of about 7,000 patients. So this bodes very well. Um, you know, we should have, I think, by the end of January, another seven trial results from uh, that will hopefully, you know, give us a bit more understanding of the impact of ivermectin on, on, uh, on COVID-19. 
So basically, this is a slide that I've taken from uh, Dr. Andrew Hill at the University of Liverpool. I thought it was a great slide, so I put it in here. Um, basically, we have shown faster time to viral clearance, shorter duration of hospitalization, 43% uh, higher rates of clinical recovery, and 83% improvement in survival rates. And really what the next steps need to do is look at, again, these studies that are coming up in, in the next upcoming months, figure out what is the optimal dosage. Is it 0 0.2 or do we need to go higher at 0 0.4 milligrams per, kilo, per kilogram? And also how many days? Are we talking about one day treatment or is it five days or seven days? So we should be getting these answers soon, but in the meantime, this medication, which has been around for decades, is really um, pretty amazing that, you know, that's showing these type of results. Much, uh, I think, better results than, uh, than the other treatments that are out right now, like uh, dexamethasone remde and uh, remdesivir. So uh, this could be a game changer. Um, this could be a game changer. So let's let's see what happens, and uh, I will keep you in up to date. All right. Talk soon. Take care.